Okay, hello. Today I'm going to pull the camshaft and governor out of this six horsepower, one cylinder monstrosity of a Listeroy diesel. There is some information online which states that it won't come out unless you remove the flywheel. And you don't want to remove the flywheel unless you really have to. It's held in place with this thing called a gib key or jib key. And they are just a monster to get rid of. Looks like somebody's tried to get this one out. It's battered and bruised, but I'm going to show you that you can get it out easily without touching that thing. So the first thing you want to do is remove the cover here to the back side of the camshaft. Now I have to make a confession here. I've already mostly got this thing apart um, because I wanted to figure this out, not on camera. Uh, so that there will probably be less swearing in the video. So everything is pretty much loose. I do have to remove a couple components uh, the hard way, but uh, I'm really going to demonstrate how to do this. It's not so hard. So the next thing is to get rid of all of the governor linkages. This will just come off. And, whoops, there's the spring, David. And as mentioned, it's all been loosened up earlier. This is a really tight fit right here, this bolt, which, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It has the pivot for uh, the rack on the injector pump. And you wouldn't think it would come out, except it does. So you loosen this baby up. Oop. This is just already loose. I'll just take that off. And you end up about zero clearance against the flywheel. And you say to yourself, oh dear, it won't come off. But then it, it comes off. Now... So what we have down here is the governor and the part, whoops, so actually this can just come out. All right, that'll come loose. Now, what's interesting in here, and let's see if we can see it, is here's the mechanism. So that spool-shaped object goes back and forth with the governor, and then this rides in there. And when it comes, when you take it apart, it all comes loose. But it's key to remember that um, when you put it back together, everything must line up. Now I'm pushing this back in because one of the tricks of doing this is that you have to remove all the studs. So I only had one stud in locating it. This doesn't have anything to do with that. But you have to be able to pull out this whole assembly and kind of rotate it. So, so it'll come out. But then you say, well, shoot, it's not clearing. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. How did I do it last? There you go. You get it on its side like this, and there it is. And you might have to turn the crankshaft a little bit. So once the governor assembly is out of the way, you can see that you've just got a clear shot. The... Uh, crankshaft, uh, the camshaft will come out. And I'm seeing something here I don't like, and this is why we're doing this project, is there's all kinds of corrosion and crud there. <clears throat> so when I looked into the crankcase, I could see that the paint had come off a lot of the flywheel gears and bob weights, and I could see paint and I could see rust. So really the object of this is to disassemble this motor, <clears throat> completely clean the inside of it, 
and uh, repaint it and reseal it. So there is a tapered pin which secured this collar to the end of this shaft. I've already removed it. It would have made for interesting video. I don't want to put it in place just to take it out again. It's <laughs> nothing that feels very good to do. Um, the pin is a real stout thing. Let me see if I can find it. So here's the pin and it's tapered. It's wider on one end than the other. Um, it's pounded in, the, the narrow end sticks up a little bit and I hit it with a punch. I tapped it lightly. I gently whispered to it and nothing happened. So I got a bigger punch and a bigger hammer, really slugged it and it came out. Um, in a modern engine, you know, there'd be a cut keyway and it would be a really <laughs> different <laughs> procedure. The whole camshaft is put together this way. All the cam lobes are held on like that. Um, and again, it's a, it's a heritage type of engineering and nothing's built like this anymore except this. I'm going to punch it out with this long um, ratchet extension. Okay. This is the tool for the job. It's a lead hammer. I got it at an auction for a couple bucks. It's homemade. It's nice to have all that mass when you're hitting something so you're not pecking away at it. So let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, it's going quite easily. All right. Right, it's loose and on the floor. Okay, now I have not done this part yet, but I'm going to withdraw this and hopefully it'll come out through the spokes of the flywheel and not make a monkey's uncle out of me. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Look at that. It needed a turn and a twist, but it came out. Oh, I can feel the corrosion in the crud on it that all needs to get paint disassembled wire brushed cleaned and painted but you can see how the cams are all held in place with taper pins this is the cam for the injector pump and here's the flywheel assembly and how it works the centrifugal force pushes those weights out and it slides this and the other thing slides on that and Bob's your uncle. Okay. So here we are looking inside the crankcase. You can see the corrosion there. Big old lumps of loose paint and corrosion and stuff. All the bushings and bearing surfaces look great. Again, the motor just hasn't been used. It's just sat for 20 years without ever really running and getting hot and doing all the things motors do. So it is a little corroded in there, but it is completely savable and it's a fun project. Here's another view inside the empty crankcase with the exception of the crankshaft. I think I mentioned that in order to remove the crankshaft, you need to remove at least one, um, but ideally both flywheels. And uh, removing the flywheels is not a good job. It's to be avoided. I do see a little corrosion on some of the roller bearings. Um, uh, you know, it would be nice to swap them out, but I'm just going to run this engine, It's you know, and see how it goes. And if there are problems with the main bearings, I will remove them. They make special Gibke pullers you can buy, and uh, I guess it makes the job better. But I'm not going to do it unless I need to. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Look at that. 
enough room in here. My cat could live in here. Plenty of space. Poor kitty.